Lynn with Littlefoot Nursery. I'm here with baby Olivia. Olivia is the Emery May sculpt. She is my newer Emery May that I acquired. And um, I want to change her into this Janie and Jack knit outfit. It's super cozy. There are these leggings. And I have, I've had this outfit for years. And it's a zero to three month size. And look at this cute sweater dress. I wish they made this for adults, maybe minus the bow, but <laughs> it is so adorable. So she's wearing a very unwintry outfit, so I'm gonna remedy that and get her changed out of this. And, um, oh, and I wanted to talk about a um, topic I saw debated a little bit, and we've and I've talked about this before, but I just thought I would add maybe some additional thoughts or maybe just think about it a little bit more because I know every sometimes our thoughts on these topics change but it's the topic around limited edition versus open edition sculpts I know I've talked about this before in the past um, but yeah Barbie uh, sorry not Barbie Bobby Barfoot of Trueborn um, they're a company they, they sell reborn kits and um, kind of like Irresistibles and McPherson's and and, um, and, and those companies but Anyway, so Bobby was sharing, was kind of posting a topic around like, you know, um, open versus limited edition. I think she was mostly polling artists. So I thought it'd be interesting to talk about that from the artist's perspective. Or I'll touch on both the artist and collector's perspective, just kind of my random ramblings and thoughts on it. And, um, and I guess I would say like, first of all, for those of you guys who are new to the Reborn community, um, reborns are, you know, lifelike baby dolls created from these vinyl sculpts and they're usually molded in clay by an artist and then re they're reproduced in vinyl as a blank kit. And then uh, reborn artists then bring that kit to life, right? So that's just kind of basics. Um, all of you guys who are watching my channel probably know that by now, but just in case somebody is watching this and just super confused because they're new to the hobby. So, um... Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Um, I'm like going to end up changing her really, really quickly and then just talking the rest of the time. So, um, so yeah, the, uh, so, so basically in terms of thinking about, thinking about this topic from the collector's perspective, I think, I think there's kind of, it, go, it kind of goes two ways. I think a lot of um, collectors talk about like, you know the 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 great thing about um, limited edition sculpts is that you like if you're like a true collector, it's that feeling of having something rare, and I think that's something that we can all appreciate. Like if you, like for example, Emery May, who's a silicone baby, she um, there's only 25 Emery Mays out there in the world, and um, it's impossible for An for Andrea to make more because she's the mold only holds out for so long for silicone. So it's impossible <laughs> to even make more, even if she wanted to. So, and it would be very interesting. I think, I feel like with silicone, part of what helps the dolls hold their value is the limited edition nature. Like imagine if there were a hundred Emery Mays out there and, um, that sounds like a lot, but in re reborns, if you think about these kits, there are, um, for the open edition kits, sometimes there are like thousands that are sold of a single sculpt. If you think about that. Um, oh my gosh, this is so perfect for her. I love this. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Oh my gosh, I love this. And guys, I have a really, sorry to detour really quickly, but I have a beautiful, beautiful cap for her. I just want to show this to you guys. I have not put this on Olivia yet. I've only put this, oh my goodness, look at her. Hi. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she says hi everyone. <laughs> oh, I love this, love, love, love this on her. Oh, she looks precious. Um, okay, oh my gosh, she's such a heavy big girl. Oh my goodness, she's so perfect. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, we'll continue with our chat. So, um, so it's nice having something that's rare but at the same time, if it's a sculpt that you're just like in love with and you missed out on it, then it's like tough luck, right? So 
It can help with the resale value of a doll if it's a limited edition. And I think also there's just the the um, aspect of, you know, people not wanting, you know, I guess like people not wanting to see the same sculpt too many times. Like I think, you know, I, I'm personally really, really happy that Levi and Saskia are open edition kits because if I wanted to paint one again in the future, I don't have a Levi or a Saskia in stock right now, but knowing that it's open edition, I don't have to stress out as an artist to be able to get one, you know, if I want one in the future or if I get a request as a custom order. Because I truly love both of those kits. Like I, all the, I've painted two or three, maybe three Saskias and definitely I've painted two Levi's and, and I have a Levi and a Saskia in my collection as well. So I really love that sculpt, both of those sculpts. And I'm happy, I'm, I'm really happy to have them um, in my collection. So. So anyway, so those are just kind of my, like some of my thoughts on like from an artist perspective. So basically in the, like people were reminiscing about, I guess, like the olden days when there were more limited edition sculpts where, you know, you would have like, okay, here's the pre-order date. Um, and then literally right on the dot, like, let's say it was 9 a.m. Everybody would like log in at 9 a.m. and like get, get their, to get their hands on the kit. Um, and knowing that it might get sold out. And if it was like a really, really cute kit, they would have to kind of debate like, ooh, do I want to buy multiple? Should I get like three of these kits? Knowing that it'll, it's likely to sell out. Collectors were also in on that as well to say, oh, I need to like get myself a kit. So, um, and I guess this, this still happens with limited edition sculpts um, for sure. But I think there are fewer limited edition sculpts than there were in the past. So, um, so yeah, so, and, and, and what I've noticed is the limited edition sculpts generally don't seem to be selling out as quickly, like not necessarily like on the pre-order day. And it's also kind of hard to know like what kit is going to like really take off. So for example, like Maisie was a limited edition re vinyl sculpt and kind of looking back, it'd probably be great if <laughs> she were open edition because she's so popular. So many people want a Maisie, myself included, before I was able to buy one secondhand. That was one that I had missed out on and I just kept stalking the doll forms and kind of waiting to see if one popped up secondhand. Um, but, but, what, but then what you have happen, and I talked about the, the doll flipping scenario, is like you can have kit flippers as well, where people will buy a kit or they'll hoard several very popular kits and they'll resell them at, you know, huge markups. Like I think a blank Maisie kit I think can go for like 600 plus dollars, um, can go for even more. Like, and sometimes with the blank kits go for more than the finished dolls because then with a blank kit, you have complete flexibility to have any artist paint that kit for you. Um, you can get the, the top artists, um, you know, someone who can, who's really mastered mono rooting and you know, what, what not, like you can really make that doll to your specifications. Um, so that doesn't feel like, super fair for the, um, for, for the original artist either, because they just sold that kit for, you know, 130 or whatever the price was initially. So it's a, so it's like the doll, so the kit flippers end up like making so much money on these like limited edition sculpts. Um, so I guess it's a mixed bag at the end of the day. Like there's, you know, there's good things and bad things about open versus limited edition. You know, I personally feel like for, and I think probably it's because my main, like in terms of my collect, like I collect both uh, Reborns and Silicones and with Reborns, because I know that they are more common, um, I'm not bothered at all by seeing lots of other versions of the same sculpt. And um, with the Silicones, I, cause I, I feel like I get a little bit of more of the rareness um, piece with my silicone collection because the silicones are, there just aren't as many of them out there. So I, I kind of satisfy that side of my collecting with silicones and then with Reborns, you know, I'm okay that with the fact that there are lots of other dolls, you know, out there that, you know, of the same sculpt. Like, I, it doesn't take away my love of Sasuke and Levi to know that there are a lot of other ones out there. I think by now Phoenix, um, by Andrea Arcella, I think that kit, I think that sculpt is sold out, um, at this point, but he was available for a while. You know, he, we, he even though he was limited edition, he was still available for, for some time. So, so there's still sometimes in most cases still there's usually like a little bit of a window where 
you can kind of see some of, and sometimes it's hard to know, like you see a few of the prototypes and it's like, okay, do you love that sculpt or not? Um, but sometimes as you see like more versions of that sculpt come out, you go, oh, hey, I didn't know that this sculpt would look so cute as an ethnic baby, for example, you know, wh whatever um, that situation might be. And so, so I think that that's, um, so I think it's great to be able to have that option to, to go out and get, get a, um, a reborn done of that sculpt. You know, once, if you kind of figure out late in the game that you are a really big fan of that particular kit. So, so yeah, so overall I'm in favor of it. Um, but I do know that for, I do know that for limited edition, uh, sculpts, you know, sometimes that it's good for the artist, um, to be able to, you know, maybe sell that doll for hire, but also, you know, I don't know. I, I, I feel like at the end of the day, the, the price of the reborns is mainly dictated by, how popular that sculpt is, whether it's open or limited, and as well as, um, although with limited, maybe the artist can end up getting a little bit more, perhaps, especially if it's on auction. And then also, you know, just how well done the doll is at the end of the day. I think if it's a well done doll, you know, it, it'll, it'll sell for, uh, for a good price. So anyway, that's all I have to say on the topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. Olivia says bye to her aunties. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Bye.